the question you're putting out on BBC Three Online from today is, and it's one we've, we've heard debated before, is it time to legalise weed? What drew your attention to this? Why did you want to talk about this one? Weed's been a part of my life since I was quite young. Um, it was normalised quite early because it was, you know, it was just outside my street door in my estate. Everyone smoked it. How um, early? When you say quite young... I was aware of it from, from really young. I mean, you start playing out in the flats and the older kids smoke weed. So you become aware of it and, it, it's, like I say, it's normalised. It's not mm. a drug, it's not this, you know... I, I kind of grew up, I grew up thinking it was, it was quite benign. Um, and so it was a question, you know, it's a, think it's, that way. I think it's, I think it's, um, you know, it's amazing how this one thing can be something different to so many, so many people. Do you know what I didn't realise, and I find this out over the weekend, <laughs> you can go to a health shop and you can buy either cannabis or various forms of cannabis to treat pain in high street health shops. That's probably um, CBD, obviously, because THC is a psychoactive part, mm. which makes it illegal. But it, weirdly, so, like, the plant is made up of THC and CBD which is naturally occurring in the plant, but in our playing and toying with the plant to make it stronger for when people smoke, to make the psychoactive side of it stronger, we've basically killed the CBD, which is the... Um, CBD is an antipsychotic. Mm -hmm. So, in its natural form, the plant is well balanced. So who did you uh, film? Who did you talk to? Oh my God, what, this, were you, you know, what were you hoping to achieve? It's just stuff. an understanding, really. Um, and to give people a, an intelligent insight to it. I think people thought, you know, Professor Green making a weed documentary, is it just going to be him having a spliff of his mates having a laugh? And it's not, yeah. it's not that at all. There's some really hard bits that we tackle in this. You know, addiction, for one. I didn't know you could be addicted yeah. to weed. That was news to so me. So that was the first one. Then you're also uh, exploring child poverty. Here's what Bernardo say about that. They say there's nearly four million children in the UK living in poverty. That's a quarter of all children and 1.7 million of those are living in what is termed severe poverty. That would be an eye-opener for me. Mm. I don't think people... I think that's going to be really eye-opening for the people that watch it because I don't think people understand that, that people live in those conditions in this country. And to see... Because it's, it's all right hearing statistics. I hate statistics mm. because behind those numbers are those children's stories. You know, imagine kids having to... Those kids were old enough to understand what was going on. You know, I'm talking to, to Nikki's daughter. Nikki was the one we just saw there. And she just burst into tears after telling me, you know, that normally what happens when she's in front of her friends, if she feels like she's going to cry, she just holds herself and pinches herself as hard as she can <coughs> so as the pain becomes dominant. Do you know what I mean? So that stops her. That's almost self-harm. And that's because of the stress that she's watching her mum go through. How but difficult you see... did you find it, then, exploring these subjects and being with that family when you feel like you're a bit helpless, I suppose. You can't do a lot about it. Completely. It's, it's horrible and it stays with you. And you, you, you build a bond with these people. You have to. To be able to, to engage with someone, you have to empathise. But to, to empathise with people means that you take on their problems. And it's it, just seeing kids in those situations, you know, where mum and dad have to take a light bulb from one room to another when they use it yeah. to decide whether they put the electricity Incredible. or the gas on. And, and the thing I'd like to point out here, Stephen, is that 63% uh, of those children who are in poverty are in a family where actually someone's bringing in a wage. Yeah. People mm. are working. So, what's the cause of all of this? Is this that this country is so expensive, that this is rip-off Britain, that people aren't educated in uh, managing their finances. When you go in, is, is alcohol to blame, drugs to blame? What, what are the drains uh, on the income? Uh, people are not educated in how to, to manage their finances. They actually probably know better how to manage their finances than anyone because mm. every penny is spent Pikes. before they even yeah. get it. Yeah. So if they, are, if, they, if they suffer any sanctions or if there's any delay in their benefits, they end up at food banks. Well, what would anger me about this banks. is I it, it, it would sort of be assumed that you know. if you have a job, well, that's your problem over. You've got a job, you do whatever you do, therefore you're OK. But obviously you're not you're OK not. and you're not even close to being OK. They're saying they can have 30, this problem's £13 getting worse. Pounds this a day is... for the whole family. And how do you, how do, you do that? You know, some of these kids are going to school and the only hot meal they get a day is when they're at school. Does any of this reflect your childhood, Stephen? Because I know you, you grew up with your, your grandma. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah, my nan um, born, is, yeah. Uh, can you relate to any of this? Um, I, not in, I never ended up in a hostel. I had friends whose whole families for a period were, were in a hostel. I grew up in social housing. I grew up on North Water State in Clapton. Um, and there were money problems constantly. I remember, uh, I'm sorry, Nan, she's going to hate me for, for being this honest, but I remember being shuffled off into a room, you know, when someone come round to collect money, and there was a lot of robbing Peter to pay Paul just to get by. So, yeah, I can. And I remember, the, the one thing that I remember, my, don't get me wrong, I had a loving childhood, it was full of love, and I was lucky because my Nan 
is the best. Mm. But there was a lot of stress in the household and you can't help but take that on board. Yes. And that's what's happening to these kids. And what sort of start in life? How does it set them up? For the rest of their life. So what well, else are you going to be talking about? So so we've covered the the drugs issue, the poverty. What else are you going to be looking at? I don't know. Maybe some music. Maybe I need to, yeah, just for my so own the, sanity. The music's been kind of just put on hold for a while, has it? A little so? bit, yeah. Um, I just, I kind of, you know, I, I wandered into this by accident. I did a, the first documentary was on male suicide, which affected me because my dad took his own life. Yeah, we talked to you about that yeah. on this programme. So. Um, and it was kind of an accident. And after that came the homelessness documentary, and they're on BBC iPlayer now as well, so people can catch up on them if they want to see where it started. But the, becoming a documentarian, that wasn't even a word I'd ever used before a documentarian. Um, <laughs> but it's been great in being able to highlight issues that people otherwise... I think we've got a really bad habit with just sweeping things under the carpet in this country yeah. and pretending they're all right, but well, they exist.